So I got a lot of questions from, from people who had, you know, various questions uh, relating to their careers and stuff. So obviously I can't cover all of them, but who knows, like maybe we'll make this a little bit more of a, a regular type of, of session and we can actually start uh, answering and start helping, you know, give information that people seem to think someone else should have told you and yet nobody has told us, I suppose. Um, I've called a session, I wish someone told me that, specifically because that's something I kept saying all the time. Uh, and, and still do, I suppose, uh, through my career, is um, why didn't someone tell me that? And, and in some cases, I asked the question and they still didn't tell me. And in some cases, I just didn't even know I was supposed to ask. And I think we've all been in those situations where we're somehow making decisions without the information that we're supposed to have. Um, so, you know, we all have varying versions of those stories. And so a large part of what I do, both in the teaching space as well as the professional development space is to try and bridge that gap between the stuff that you do actually learn and that you know, is in the textbooks and, and, and is something that you know, you'll get told or whatever. And the stuff that people kind of seem to think you should know, but aren't really saying anything. Um, and then obviously, you know, things that I've learned and things that I've, um, that I've experienced and, you know, that, that perhaps might help you not to make the same mistakes as me so you can make your own, your very own fabulous mistakes all by yourself. And then you can tell us what they are and someone else can learn from them. Um, a lot of people know me more as a, you know, in the lecturing space, you know, I, I focus on coaching, study, study strategy and study mindset for students on accounting, professional accounting path. But in terms of my, in terms of professional career, um, I was trying to calculate it when I was sort of planning, you know, this, this discussion, I was trying to calculate it and I realized like I started running out of fingers of how many years I've been working, um, but I've been working for 25 years. So that's quite a long time. Um, I started working at the age of 17. I left college um, at the age of 17. I had to start working straight away because my family didn't have money to send me to university and I didn't have university entrance anyway because I got some very bad career advice and study advice from my guidance teacher at school. So I didn't have university entrance and I spent the next two years uh, working and studying a whole bunch of stuff to try and get into university. Yeah, I started as a receptionist slash, they used to call them Girl Fridays. I don't know if they still actually refer to it as that, like pretty much just the general office dog's body. You just do everything. Yeah, I worked there for a while. I worked, I've, I've worked, you know, worked for an accounting firm, an accounting practice um, for, for a while that told me they were psycho registered. So I thought that I was doing my psycho articles and uh, it turned out that I wasn't and they were lying. And so that was a waste of like two years of my life. <laughs> I was like 19. What did I know? Um, I worked for a soap opera for most of my degree and um, that was, you know, that was useful for me because I studied part-time and I studied at night. Uh, you know, I, I worked during, during the day and I worked, I worked as a bookkeeper for about eight years before I started, before I started my articles. I did my articles at a medium-sized international firm after I passed CTA, uh, my post-grad, and um, I started lecturing while I was studying, while I was doing articles, my first year of articles, I started lecturing part-time as well for private institutions. When I finished articles, when I qualified, I moved over to full-time lecturing, moved around from there to a training company. And then, you know, from the training company, I started working for myself, doing consulting work. And I think that was in about 2013. Uh, I co-founded Tobaldi Online Education with... Um, who, you know, Richard, who's now my husband, we co-founded that, which is online classes for students doing uh, UNISA, BCOM and CTA. We sold that uh, when we moved to, to Montenegro. We sold that a few years ago when we moved to Montenegro. Uh, we bought into an uh, online education group, which was part of a listed company. So it was a subsidiary of a listed company. And then when we, when we sold out of that company, we moved to Montenegro. I, I became much more of an, like an actual entrepreneur. The reason that I share that with you, I think, is to kind of indicate that I've had quite a bit of experience on every side of the table from, you know, uh, being an interviewee uh, and, and starting new jobs, many, many different times, many different types of jobs, to different levels of management, to C, you know, C-suite levels, executive levels, to uh, shareholder, you know, owning shares in a, in a, in a subsidiary of a listed company, uh, teaching, obviously, so I understand what students are struggling with. 
um, hiring people responsible for, you know, for, for, for hiring decisions, part of, part of owning your own business, entrepreneur. Yeah, it's not something I ever thought I'd do. So there's a huge amount of experience that I have um, on all sides of the table, which is very valuable because I understand, you know, that, that there's going to be times where we want to move from one thing to the other. And the question is, you know, how, how do I do that? Or what does that actually look like? Or how does that work or whatever? So um, from that perspective, I, I definitely can give a lot of insight and valuable information into all of the stuff. So fine. And obviously, as I said, lots of experience, lots of mistakes to help you make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. As I said, make your own mistakes.